The United States had over four million miles of roads stretching across its landscape. I felt like I'd been on all of them. City roads, back roads, no roads at all. Didn't matter. I'd been living in this truck for longer than I'd cared to admit. I used to have all the boxes checked in my life. The job, the house, the marriage to the wife that would be with me forever. Well, that's for another day. As for this one, I'd been staying in an exclusive beachside property. A private beach, a great sunset, and a few beers. It was a private property. The only problem is, I didn't know whose private property it was. It didn't belong to me. That's all I knew. And if anybody found me here, there'd probably be some trouble. I was going through life one day at a time. Well, till that phone call. Some lawyer from Pittsburgh telling me that a friend I'd helped along my journey had passed away and they'd left me a small piece of land in their will. And given my current options, I couldn't really refuse. That was the day that I picked up and I moved to Wyoming. For the first time in a long time, I was on a journey that actually had a destination. It was a sense of comfort that I hadn't felt in a very long time. Like my life was somehow back on track, just like that. Of course, I knew it wasn't, but it was fun to pretend sometimes. Anyway, headed to Wyoming. I can say I hadn't much thought about that as a destination. I didn't know anyone from the state. I didn't have a favorite sports team there. In fact, I didn't even really know about the land I was going to. I was so confused by the original call that I'd forgot to ask how much land was even mine, or even what shape it was in. And to be honest, didn't really much matter. It was better than I'd had in a really long time. I'd been kicked out, <clears throat> asked to leave more locations in more towns by more police officers than I'd care to admit. I was never mad at them. They were just doing their job. The problem was I had nowhere else to go. That was until now. Headed to Wyoming, a place that I hoped would turn my life around. I hated stopping for gas. Aside from the rising cost, I also had Big Bird here, and she loved to guzzle gasoline. Of course, I couldn't have ended up with a diesel because that would have saved me way too much money. So instead, I ended up getting this gas guzzler that was, well, to put it nicely, not too high on the miles per gallon. And because of such, we haven't even went through one state yet. We are in Arkansas, north of Louisiana, the state that we started in and we're getting gas again. I knew this was gonna be an expensive trip, but I really didn't know how expensive. Now I'm figuring that we're gonna to have to stop for gas maybe twice the amount of times that I actually anticipated. But we were in Arkansas, and I'd been here a few times. It's really underrated when it came to the scenery here. Rolling hills, great looking rivers that were filled with bass and catfish and trout. I've gone fishing here a couple times, and it's good fishing. But as much as I loved Arkansas, I couldn't wait to get out of it. I left from Lake Providence, Louisiana. That's where I'd been staying for a while. And all I'd been doing is driving north in Arkansas since I left. Of course, my ultimate goal tonight was to set up in a small town in Colorado called Fairfield. Uh, it's got an affordable campground, and in it, it's everything that we need. It's got water hookups, everything like that. We're not going to stay there too long. We are going to stay there overnight, and then we are going to eventually head to Wyoming. Finally back on the road and headed northwest into Kansas, and this long road's got a guy thinking, and, you know, this trip has got me thinking a lot about my friend Cooper. Uh, Cooper's the one who's giving us the land in Wyoming, the one that just passed away, and what a great guy, you know. Uh, he was born and raised in Pittsburgh and ended up moving out to the country and ended up starting a farm so he was a first generation farmer and he'd done it his whole life uh, anyway i end up running through pittsburgh one day and i end up getting a really bad problem with the truck a transmission issue which usually that means the graveyard for cars or trucks but this one it was also my house so we needed to fix it cooper ended up floating me money not even knowing who i was 
and I ended up working the debt off on his farm and actually ended up staying past that to help him out for that whole summer. But that's the kind of guy that Cooper was. He was always there to help you out. He was a good guy. He'd always tell me to buy a house locally, you know, settle down, stop running from my problems. And the truth is, he's probably right. And now he's going to have the last laugh. And his gift is a, a clear message to me, uh, sort of like his last helping hand. I'm excited to drive here to Wyoming. I'm anxious to see the area. I'm nervous to see the land. But at the very least, it's somewhere to stay where the police or no one else is going to bug me for the night so I can get a full night's sleep. If there was one thing you could count on in every small town off of a highway, it was a small greasy spoon diner. Cheap food, delivered fast, and designed for you to be on the run. That was perfectly my speed, so I stopped off here in Kansas. Now, yeah, I'm only a few hours away from where I'm going to stop for the night in Colorado, but my stomach currently does not care. So I suppose now is as good a time as any to tell you how I got here. Well. I was working at a warehouse for my wife's family's business. They dealt with farmers and delivering things like seed and fertilizer, you know, things like that. I was the guy who got the pallets and put them in place for storage or sent the orders out on trucks. It wasn't really an exciting life, but it was a safe one. And when our relationship came to an end, surprisingly, so did my employment. So that's when I got this truck. It was originally supposed to buy a few months for me, you know, to sort things out, stay in a campground for a summer, get back on my feet. But as the months grew colder, I had to pick up and leave. Indiana is no place to live in a van in the winter, so I had to hit the road south. That was a few years ago, and here I am, still on the road. I know, I know, not much progression, not much sorting things out. But now I was headed to a permanent home, thanks to a good buddy of mine that I'd met on these roads. It's funny how life works sometimes, but I can say for sure that I was grateful for this opportunity, and I was definitely not going to let it pass me by. I knew this chill campground just outside of Fairfield, Colorado. On the road, you pick up tips from others, and this campground was one of them. Affordable, safe, quiet, everything I needed for tonight. Tomorrow, I'd have enough chaos. I needed to go to a real estate office and sign papers to a piece of land I absolutely knew nothing about. There'd certainly be enough surprises tomorrow, but for tonight, I didn't need surprises. I needed sleep. I was exhausted. Well, today's the day. Felt weird to say that. Feels even weirder to think that last night might have been my last official night on the road. Of course, I don't really anticipate that it's going to be the last night I sleep in this truck, but I'm patient and I'm ready to do this thing one step at a time. I always like this time in the morning to myself. I get to eat this bagel, eat this cookie, gather some of my thoughts, plan out the day, figure out some goals. And now I'm left wondering how my new goals would compare to the old ones that I had on the road. Whatever it is, I can't wait to get there. I just want to see what I'm walking into. You know, maybe it's a gravel pit or some kind of land that's impossible to get to from the road. Truth is, I have no idea. And worrying about it's just going to waste my time. So, with that said, it's time to get back on the road and get closer to figuring all of this out. After 19 hours on the road, countless miles, an incredible amount of gas, I finally arrived in Elk Mountain. I knew one address that I was headed to, and that's where I was going. The odd part was, it wasn't my own. Elk Mountain Realty, the key to all of my questions as far as what I'm getting into. To be honest, I have no expectations. I'm just happy to get off the road and have somewhere to finally call my own. I was thankful for Cooper. My only real goal was to not waste this opportunity that he had handed to me.
I had arrived in Elk Mountain, Wyoming. After a long drive from Louisiana and a long meeting with a fast-talking realtor, I had the envelope that I needed. Inside it, I was told there'd be information on this land, what we were being given by Coop, and where the location was so we could get there. And I, for one, am excited to get there, and I'm eager to see what we're getting ourselves into. The first thing I needed to do, though, was find some work. This land surely did pay for itself, but food and gas didn't. And besides, I didn't want to be another beach bum like I was in Louisiana. I felt like I'd relaxed and been lazy for enough days to last me a lifetime. And besides, this time I wanted to do it different. I wanted to build something for myself, build myself a future. I was tired of working at other people's businesses or farms and seeing them advance. I needed more, and I was sure hoping that Wyoming had brought that into my life. One thing was for sure, it was all up to me. Okay, so about to open up the envelope that I got at the real estate office. I didn't have a chance to do it there because I was rushed out by a fast-talking lawyer who needed to get to another appointment, but let's open this up and let's see what is in here. My name is Randy Thompson. I'm a partner at Weston & Thompson LLP, a law firm based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Cooper Stewart, representing him. It's with mixed emotions. Uh, as an executive of Mr. Stewart's estate, I've overseen the legal and administrative process following Mr. Stewart's passing. As such, it's my duty to inform you that you have been named as a beneficiary in the last will and testament of Mr. Stewart. The property, $70,000 in financial assets. $70,000? The first lawyer never mentioned that. Thank you for your time and please accept the deepest and condolences for your loss. Please feel free to call my office, Randy Thompson. $70,000? That is beyond what I had expected. Let's see what else we got here. 17 Mountain View Drive in Elk Mountain, Wyoming. 35 acres of Elk Mountain hunting land. Property has a stream running through middle of it with wildlife great views of the wyoming mountainside and an excellent place to hunt for elk deer and other animals property has never had a house or structure on it agricultural and hunting come check it out sam young and look at these pictures let's zoom it to the camera a little bit closer this looks amazing um it looks like a good amount of land it looks like we could definitely put our truck over there it easily has no water hookup or anything like that, so we are going to be living off-grid, but that is a lot of land. I I don't really even know how to process this from Cooper giving this to me, but oh boy, there is a lot to figure out here today. Let's try to uh, get over there and check it out. So, so far we've covered my house my job. I guess the only thing left to talk about is the wife. Well, back in Indiana, I used to be in a bowling league. Snakes on a Lane was our team name. You know, like the uh, movie, the snakes on a... <laughs> okay, anyway. We'd bowl every Thursday night, and we weren't any good, but it was a routine. You know, it was one of those things in my life that I could count on every week. Some beers with the guys, a few games of bowling. It was a perfect way to spend a Thursday night. Unfortunately, my wife thought that too. You see, when I was bowling, she'd um, entertain someone else at our house. We lived in a small town where everyone knew what was going on but me. And when I found out she was cheating on me, I also found out that nobody in town had my back. They all just looked at me like nothing was wrong, only to think I was a fool after I'd passed by. So that's when I bounced. I started living in this camper here. I went on the road. Now I was all the way out in Wyoming, miles and miles from Indiana, and I never felt more free or happy. And now, I just needed to see this land. Well, we've been driving for what seems like forever. If you add up the past two days, it really does seem like forever. But from the looks of it, it's all about to be worth it.
it's hard to believe that this land right here is mine. But that's exactly what it says. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. But whatever it is, I was sure that we were going to have enough room to do it. The first steps were to do what we usually did. Make a quick camp for the night, grab a few drinks, enjoy the scenery. The difference this time is that we're going to be doing it on our own land. No cops, nobody telling me to get off the property. It was ours, and we were legally able to be here. I was excited to start this journey, even though I had no idea where it was taking me. And I guess that's really what life's about sometimes, right? Being spontaneous, switching things up. Well, that's at least what my life's been like for the past few years. This may go down as one of the craziest few days of my life. From driving from Louisiana to Wyoming in two days, to inheriting land from Cooper, to also getting a huge surprise of $70,000. As so I sit here drinking this beer and recording this, I still have no idea what I'm gonna do out here. It seems $70,000 is gonna help me get there a bit faster, but I'm still not really sure how to use it. I assume I need a small tractor out here to do some chores, but if I'm being honest, I don't even really know what those chores are exactly. I used to own chickens in my old place in Indiana. Y you know, nothing big. 15 egg layers that kept our family and friends stocked with some eggs. They weren't all that hard to raise, and the financial investment was something that was surely easier than cows or pigs. I don't know. Maybe I'll put up a small house for them and buy me some, so at least I can feed myself out here. Either way, that's for tomorrow. Tonight, I just want to sit here and listen to nature, drink some beers, pass out. I know it's not going to take long for me to get to bed tonight, but before I do, I just want to make sure that I soak all this up. Today, I'm happy. But as happy as I am, I still feel guilty as well. This was Coop's land, and in my head, it always would be. I was taking care of it for him. He would have wanted that. And as the sun sets on those mountains and gives me this great view, I'll drink the last one for him before I go to bed. It was my first morning in Elk Mountain, Wyoming. I came into town yesterday and was given land and $70,000. So beating yesterday probably wasn't in the cards, but building off of yesterday is something that needed to happen. All right, well, that was the money well spent. $7,000 on a truck and not that one but we got one that will move some things on our land of that of course being the blue in here it's an older model that's for sure but i don't really care about any of that i just want to be able to move the trees and move things to our property when we get going you know i talked about wanting to get chickens so possibly moving some bags of feed big bulk bags of feed with this thing would be helpful maybe even get a tractor up on there but Let's get inside here. We'll fire this thing up. And we will slowly head on out to our property here. And let's make sure that we don't hit anything on the way. That would be a very expensive mistake. But all right, on the way back to the land. And we've got a lot of things to do in a short amount of time here, which is, to be honest, a little overwhelming for me at the moment. but. I guess the overall mission here is to clean up the land that we just got. I know that mowing is going to be the first thing that we're going to need to do, but we don't even have a tractor. We have $63,000 left, and I know we'd be able to get something on lease here at the store. I'm just really not sure what. Uh, I know that we need a small tractor, uh, but it's got to be big enough to be able to fit a brush hog on the back of it because we're going to need to get a lot of this land cleared out. and. When I get back to the land, we'll look online and we'll see if we can find anything. I, I got a cheap laptop a few months ago and man, has it helped me out. When you live off grid, it's a good idea to get as many things as you can to give you information. And this laptop continues to be the best thing that I've paid for. 
it's really going to be beneficial when we start looking into what we can do to make money out here in Elk Mountain. Not really sure of the farms around here, but we can take a look at the area and kind of get a general idea. I do know that chickens are in our future because I've done chickens before. I do know how to do the egg layers, so that will help us out. I would also really like to get into the broilers or the meat chickens. I would really like to sell meat chickens as well because I think that that is something that we can do. I know that we don't have enough money or room really to start a cow operation. That is, that is something that is well beyond our years. We, we are going to need a lot of time to build up to that. Pigs are possible and sheep are possible, but I think with the grass that we have on our new land, I don't know if sheep or cows for that matter are really the best thing to do. Now we're getting closer down here to the land and as I said, I'm going to grab the laptop. We're gonna look at one of the places around here that I do know rents equipment. I know they rent anything from small to big sized equipment because I've seen their yard and I've actually seen uh, one of the pamphlets hanging around here. I think it was in the real estate office that I checked that out. But as you can see, our land is very remote and I love that and I don't like that at the same time. It's gonna be very expensive to get some things out here delivered. So most likely we are going to have to pick it up ourselves and that's a big reason why we got this truck. But we're gonna continue on. We are getting pretty close here to our land. It turns out that we picked a great place to live. Elk Mountain in Carbon County, Wyoming. It's about 25 miles west of Laramie where the State University is. And as you can see, it's known for its natural beauty. And man, did it offer a ton of that. Hunting, fishing, camping, you name it. If it's in the outdoors, this place probably had it. And it was a town with a real Western charm type feel from what I could tell. And the people here have been really nice so far. The town's industry was focused around agricultural and ranching. These were country folk and I was more than willing to try to fit in the best way that I could. All right, now getting close down here to the land should be just down this hill here. And like I said, I'm gonna clean up real quick and I will get the laptop out and look at this place that I think might be able to rent us both a tractor and a brush hog. And as you can see, we're gonna need it. That's for sure. Nobody's ever farmed this land. I can almost be safe to, to say that. I've walked around here. I don't see any fence posts from any old farms. I don't see a milk house or anything like that. So it's safe to say that this land has been vacant until now. Either way, let me get cleaned up and we will get the laptop out. Okay, guys, and we've got the laptop out. And I noticed when I was at the real estate office that Clearwater Motors uh, also did renting and we are now at their website. We're going to check this out. Uh, yep, we rent that. Well, that's a great slogan for what we're looking for, hopefully. A great sign of things to come. But welcome to Clearwater Motors, Elk Mountain's place to rent. We have everything from small home project equipment to larger industrial and farm agricultural equipment available. Good. 21 days at a time. Okay. As well as lease to own options. Okay. Yep, there's the place. And small jobs for residential projects, smaller farms, or large-scale farms. I'm going to go on medium jobs and see what happens. Contact us with questions. Okay, looks like we got a plow, and it looks like we've got a combo. Mower brush hog combo. $500 a day for a John Deere 710. A John Deere 710 tractor and a SEP Knusel? F240? I know I pronounced that wrong. The JD710 tractor is reliable and versatile agricultural workhorse. Dirty construction. Wide range of farming tasks. And then the mower. Okay. $500 a day. I think that we could probably get that done in a day. I'm hoping. If not, we could pay the $1,000 for the two days, but I would really, really enjoy not doing that. So maybe we are going to see if we can go over there and rent this today or 
we'll see if we can rent it for tomorrow. That way we can get a very early start on the day. I think that's probably going to be a better deal, but first we got to get over there. So let's get it back in the truck. And this is why we got this truck, because I do not want to be driving this uh, camper around town. I do not want to be known as the camper guy in town. So we do have at least a truck. We're going to get over there and we're going to see what kind of deal they can give us over at Clearwater Motors. I headed over to Clearwater Motors, and the drive there was scenic, to say the least. It was still before noon, and we still had the whole afternoon to work, so I was hoping that they'd have a half-day deal or something like that to save us some money. And I knew this adventure would be expensive, so I was trying to save any money I could. But as the saying goes, it takes money to make it, and we were certainly going to put that to the test. I was curious to see what the land would look like, all mowed up and tended to. I think once we see what the land really looks like, we can start to think of how we're going to make money here. The one thing I was sure of is we were staying here. I was tired of running, and I liked that this was Coop's land. I didn't want to hang on to too much from the past, but Cooper's friendship was always one of them. This land was like me doing something for him finally, after all the things that he's done for me. I was going to make something out of this land, even if I had no idea how to yet. And now we'll just walk in here and see if they have what we need. Hey there, sir. Name's Rick. Welcome to Clearwater Motors. How can I help you today? Well, I was looking on your website and I found the Brush Hog Tractor Combo, and I was just wondering if you rented those by the half day. Usually our rentals last 24 hours, so you need to have it back by this time tomorrow. Do you have a small job you're doing? Well, I just got some land in town, and it's in rough shape, I'm not gonna lie, but... I'd like to brush hog it down and see what it really looks like, you know? I just don't know how long it's going to take me. Well, how many acres do you got? It says it's about 35 acres, but I believe that that's some of the hill, so I'm guessing somewhere around 15 to 20. All right, well, you'll probably need our full 24-hour rental, but since you're missing the morning to work, why don't you have it back to us tomorrow before we close? Great. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, that should give me more than enough time to mow it. And obviously, if I get done sooner, I'll just bring it back. Uh, do I just pick it up here or... No, we'll deliver it. Just write your address down with me and we'll have it up there in about an hour. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't get your name. Rick, and I don't think I got yours. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, the name's Herd. Well, have a good one, Herd. Yeah, you too, Rick. All right, now getting back to the land, we just got some lunch real quick downtown at the diner, so we are just going to wait on the track, on the tractor, and it looks like they've already brought it. So we've got the John Deere here, and we've got the mower. That's impressive. That's very fast that they acted, but we are going to park this over here as close as we can. And now here is the John Deere and the Brush Hog. And we've got a lot of work to do. And I'm glad that it is only the afternoon, early afternoon at that. So we will have a little bit more time to get all of this done. But let's start this up. And wow. I haven't been on a tractor in a couple of years. Actually, the last time now that I think about it that I was on a tractor was over at Cooper's. And now, fittingly, the next time that I get on a tractor is over at Cooper's Old Land. And, you know, this is always going to be Cooper's Land in my mind, but we are going to clean it up. And I'm really interested to see just what this place looks like after we get all of this brush and all of this grass all mowed up. I think we can really start telling what a property looks like once we do all of that. And this, as you can see, has not been maintained in quite a while. So... I'm interested to see how much land we've got. I'm interested to see what shape the land is in. And the only way to do that really is to drive through it and start farming it. Now, we're not able to 
farm it, so to speak, because we don't have any plows, and I'm not even sure if we're going to get into all that, but at least our version of farming at this point is really just driving this tractor around and just kind of getting back used to driving a tractor. So that is what we are going to do here, and I'm hoping that the sun will stay up in the sky because we really need the light. We have no light out here, obviously. We barely have uh, a place to live. There's no running water out here, and we are roughing it, so to speak. But, you know, for us, that's just a normal, average day. At least the cops aren't going to come. At least no one is going to tell us to leave, because they can't. This is our land. Now, let's start treating it like that, and let's start getting all of this stuff mowed down. At the end of the day, I was happy. Then again, what else could I ask for? I arrived in a random town, got handed a life-changing amount of money, and was granted land from an old friend. I was surprised at how much land we had, but I was even more surprised at the shape it was in. There were no sinkholes, there were no random junkyards made by random people that passed by, none of that. It was all just great Elk Mountain land, and it was a ton of opportunity, my opportunity, to make something of myself. After a few days in Elk Mountain, Wyoming, it was already starting to feel like home. The land that Coop had given us turned out to be as gorgeous as the area surrounding it. When I first arrived here, I was worried about what type of land we'd been given and how many things we might need to fix on it. Turns out, we just needed to mow it a little bit, and then we needed to start building whatever we needed. And what we needed was a chicken coop, so we could start making money immediately. A house wasn't a top priority right now. I guess I could continue living in this truck for a little longer, but what I needed was to get a coop done, and the past few days have been filled with trying to make that goal become a reality. If I was going to stay here permanently, then I was going to need to earn it, and over the past few days, I had been doing exactly that. And that should just about do it. And now we have a chicken coop. I spent the last couple days building this thing, going down to the lumber yard, getting a couple things. And granted, it's not the biggest chicken coop that we could get, but it will hold about 40 chickens. And that's really all we're going to get for the first run. Um, and by that, I mean we are going to get 20 egg layers and 20 broilers. So. That will be good. We also have to ted this field up. We mowed it in the last episode, and I'd really like to ted that up. So let me go and get my cell phone, and let me give a call down to the store to see if we can get them to deliver a tedder for us. Good morning, Clearwater Motors. Frank, it's Heard. I came down there yesterday to run a mower and a tractor from you guys. Yes, Heard. How's everything going? Well, I got it done yesterday, and it looks great. The equipment worked really well. Uh, I was just wondering if I could get a tether from you guys today. I thought you might ask me that for today, so I reserved one in the book. But yeah, we can get that up to you. Thanks for that, Frank. I really appreciate it. Uh, the only problem is I won't be here in the morning uh, because I have to go down and get some chickens. 
Oh, that's no problem. I'll just have my driver come up and drop it off like last time. Okay, well, I don't have a driveway, so just come onto the property any way the driver feels comfortable. Um, it's all good, though. There's no mud spots. Everything should be dry. All right, Herd. No worries there. We'll get that tether up to you as soon as we can, and then you can flip that hay. All right, well, I appreciate all the help, Frank. Thank you. No worries, buddy. Here if you need me. Have a good one. You too. We were off to buy a few box of chicks. Half of them would produce eggs that we'd sell to locals in the area, and if we were lucky, we'd land a few places in town to sell them to as well. The other half of the chicks would grow for about seven or eight weeks and then be sent to the butcher to sell for meat to local residents or restaurants or even for us. We needed to make our own food. Without a traditional job in town, we were left to our own devices for both food and water. So producing our own food on our own land was something that was very important to me early on. We were also in search of some feed, and I'd have to keep the bags in my house or a truck for now so that the wild animals didn't come down and help themselves to it. I think a garage was next on the building list, but who knows how much that would cost. <sighs> One problem at a time, I guess. For now, let's get in the store and grab some feed and the box of chicks. All right, now the chicks are loaded in the front seat of the truck and we've got 40 chicks and now we've got four bags and two bags are for the layers and two bags are for the broilers. They have different feed. The broilers are going to eat a lot more than the egg layers and the egg layers are going to take a little bit of time, a few months for sure until we can get some eggs, but it is an investment and you know, the. Uh, the eggs are going to help us quite a bit to sell to local restaurants and even people, even um, people looking just to get eggs for their refrigerator. I think we can definitely do that, but that's going to be in a few months. The thing that we are going to make money on first are the broilers. As I said, we're going to have them about seven to eight weeks. We are going to fatten them up. All they do is sit there and eat. It is the greatest life for the shortest amount of time uh, of any real farm animal. But that is okay because we are going to use them and they are going to help us quite a bit for eating out here. Um, we have money, but we're trying to conserve it. We're trying to make money and trying to make money by making food for this community. And chickens, like I said, something that I know how to do. We're not going to try to get overly ambitious and try to get into cows because I think that's got a lot of problems and a lot of money that has to go out. We do not have that much money. And I hate to say that because Coop gave us $70,000. We bought this truck. We bought the wood to uh, make the chicken coop. We have bought some feed. Now, we still have some money, but we don't have as much as we need to do a cow farm. So I'm hoping that we're going to be able to make money on the chickens. And then from there, maybe branch off into other things. And by other things, I definitely mean a garden, which will and should happen soon. That way we can eat the produce and not have to worry about eating meat all the time but for now the chickens are going to do the chickens are going to do a lot of good for us and i can't wait to get them on the pasture now i don't know if clearwater motors has dropped off the tether and the tractor again i don't know if i want to lease to own that tractor I, I like driving it i'm just not sure if it's big enough to do what we're going to need i'm going to probably need to get a tractor that has some hydraulics that way we're able to use that to pick up big bags of feed and save even more money when we buy in bulk because buying these little bags of feed that's not where it's at it's going to eat into our profit quite a bit and we are just going to be spinning our tires we can live we can survive we've been doing that now i would like to actually build something let's get up to the farm and i'll pick it up when we get closer all right, now arriving here at the farm and not seeing anything yet. Oh, well, there it is. Okay, so they have left the tether here, which is great. And the tractor back. And, you know, like I said, I'm really contemplating seeing how much it costs to buy that tractor. But I don't know if it's big enough. That is going to be something that I ponder for a while, but... 
Anyway, we are going to go over here and park the truck up and get these chickens out because I'm really excited. This is a big day here for us here on the farm. We finally had chicks on our farm and I for one was happy. I spent the past few days putting that chicken house together myself and I was happy with how it came out. All that running around at the hardware stores and the tractor supply, well, that was all paying off now. These ladies were small, but half of them would be twice the size by next week. The other half I would have to wait a few months to mature so we could collect eggs from them. One thing was for sure, getting the predators to stay away could prove hard to manage. But I was already looking into putting up a fence for these ladies, and me. But that was for another day though. For now, I needed to flip this grass so it would be dry faster so we could bail up this hay on this property. All right, so now that the chickens are on the property and they are in their house safe and secure, we have got to get to this grass. We have got to start heading this up and, uh, you know, we should probably get this out of the way. And it's heavy. Put it right there. And now let's get to the tether. We don't want to pick up any other things like that. Um, I'm hoping that we didn't miss any other things like that. But here's what they brought us. Of course, they brought us the John Deere 710. That's what we've been using this whole time to get this land all good. And again, I might buy this tractor. I'm not really sure if it's going to be this one or if we should just splurge and get a bigger one. But either way, it's going to do the job today. It is going to flip this hay for us. And let's get this lowered. Turn it on there. Oh, lower it. And now turn it on. There we go. That works better when it's down like that. And now, yeah, we're in business. And now we are going to use this tether. It's been a couple of years since I've used a tether. And I guess ironically it was at Coop's house in Pennsylvania. It's been a couple of years since I used a tractor, a tether, anything. So there's always a chance for an adventure. But I think I do remember how to use this tether. It's fairly simple. It will flip this grass very quick uh, so that it can dry faster for us. That way... We are able to ballot faster, and our chickens are in need of hay, so I'm trying not to buy it. Um, but, you know, if we have to buy a couple bales, we have to buy a couple bales. But let's just see if uh, this is flipping. It looks like it is. Let me stop the tractor real quick. I just kind of want to see how we're doing so far before I go all the way through this land. And Yeah, looks like it's flipping pretty good. Everything's in rows. We'll still probably use a uh, wind rower to get them into more neat rows. That way we're able to ballot a little quicker. But either way, we're looking good. And now in terms of who we're going to sell this hay to, I, I really don't know. I know there's a couple horse farms around here, a couple of dairy farms around here. But I really do need to drive around the area more and explore what's out here because... The truth is, I don't know my customer base all that well. I don't really know who's out here outside of driving around town and just uh, looking off in the distance and seeing a couple farms. But maybe Frank will let me put something up on the bulletin board down at the store. That's kind of the newspaper around here. We, of course, have an official newspaper. But for farmers, that's kind of how the word gets out is the bulletin board down at the store. So I may uh, use that. But... Either way, um, I do want to improve this field as well. And I'm talking organically. I'd like to see if maybe we could talk to a dairy farm, maybe, or something like that, where they could spread some manure on the field. That way, we just get a better yield on this, and it just improves the field even more because this field hasn't been touched in a very long time, and I'm really worried about the quality of the hay. I would really like to get it better. So... I think that's something that I may explore. Either way, let's get this field done.
And now just finishing the tedding job now. This place is looking better and better every time we set out to work on it. And it's been less than a week here. And we have already gotten this place looking a lot better. Hoping to get these bales done the next time we're together. And I would really like to talk to the contractor about maybe getting a garage here for us. Because at very least, it will help with the snow. I mean, the truck is not insulated all that well. And neither would a garage, but it would be a little bit better than just sitting out here in the open cold. So... There are bigger things to worry about than hay. That's mostly my health and safety out here in the cold of Wyoming. But also the hay. You know, we want to keep it dry. We want to make sure that people are able to buy it. So that is a concern that we have. But that is where we are going to leave this field right here. I'll put this tractor over here so that the guys can come get it. I might just have them keep it here until the next time. But either way, the tedding is all completed. I was happy to have finally tetted this grass. I'd be happier when I was able to sell some hay, or at least use it instead of buying it at the store for our chickens. Either way, we had animals now, and we had our grass flipped and drying. But most of all though, I was happy to be using Coop's land for something. I think he'd approve of it, and something he'd be proud of me for. At the end of the day, that would always mean more to me than the dollars that this place could provide. Either way, I was surviving in Wyoming. And for the first time in a long time, I had no plans on picking up or moving to the next town.